Hi, this is Todd Siefker doing my AIP project for Morningside College on December 9th, 2017. The title of my project is called Infusing the Four Seas into Foreign Language. The class started off excellent with an annotated bibliography, which really shaped my thinking right off the bat. By reading these sources, it really gave me um, a lot to think about. And the things that I would think about during this class had to do with I came to know as the four C's, collaboration, creativity, communication, critical thinking, and the rest of those things, which project-based and student-centered and writing, uh, these concepts uh, really affected me. I thought it was also interesting that when I used the ERIC database, that a lot of the sources uh, came from all around the world, uh, which as a foreign language teacher is is probably a good thing. I, I got exposure to what's going on in foreign language and New Zealand, Japan, Turkey, Iran, and a lot out of California as well. And all of these sources, I thought it was interesting how they had these common themes and the four C's just kept coming back. And this Kivunha's uh, essay really started to help me cement what um, I could focus on. And, and basically it was the four C's. And why focus on the four C's? It's because the state of foreign language education in the United States is woefully inept. Um, we, the population that is bilingual in this country due to public education instruction is less than 1%. If you look at the overall bilingual state status of the United States, we have about 20% of our people who are bilingual, but a lot of that has to do with um, immigration. If you look around the world, though, and this is Europe, you see it almost completely flipped. In Luxembourg, 99% of the population is bilingual. Uh, Netherlands, 91. Now, of course, they start earlier than we do, but if you look at just the time frame that we do foreign language in, in this country, you find that what we have been doing, it absolutely does not work. Giving out vocab lists, practicing words in isolation, hoping that those chunks will add up to some whole language it doesn't happen, and 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 multiple choice slash fill in the blank type test does not work. Basically, foreign language instruction is set into an industrial model where you just rep things out. Um, you reward compliance. You treat language as basically nothing more than just a grammar translation from one concept to another. You memorize forms in isolation and basically which is conjugate. We have basically tried to teach language in terms of just mere conjugation and what it is added up to is less than one percent of our population being uh, able to speak in a foreign language and I'm not sure just a sec here oh please if you look at what's going on in the cutting edge of foreign language instruction today this week I got to talk to uh, Kristen Hoffman who is the director of foreign language in uh, for the textbook series EMC. Millions of kids are using EMC products across the country. She basically says language is it, it, two things, communication and culture. And, uh, and in some ways, I think she's, that's awesome. We're putting culture back into foreign language. And we're, we're working on not just forms. We're working on speaking, reading, writing, and listening. Awesome. But I think we need to go the next step. And that is when you look at what the world is going to be like, and say 2042, 47% of the jobs that we have will be automated or outsourced. And we are having kids are inheriting a world that we have no idea. We can't even imagine because uh, in the next 20 years, there will be more change than in the previous 300. We have got to prepare these kids for that kind of a world with creativity. Uh, so therefore my overall plan infuses these skills for the future into my curriculum um, planning instruction and assessment uh, basically uh, my thesis that I keep coming back to from that annotated bibliography was that um, using creativity collaboration critical thinking in the, in the four moods of communication set in authentic cultural context. So I set out. Uh, the long term, though, is to put the four C's into our curriculum. We're in a two-year planning process right now in my district to uh, design curriculum, and I am definitely going to keep preaching 
uh, the four C's. But I wanted to see, you know, what uh, does a four week lesson look like with the four C's? And uh, I did this lesson uh, in November of 2017 in a high school, about 1300 students in Western Iowa. The goals that I set out to do uh, was to use the Day of the Dead, which was in early November, as a, a, a cultural point to use some writing and, and uh, speaking and, and to be performed in interesting settings like the cellar or, and you'll see, um, we'll move on. Week two, the goal was to create, and this was the bulk of my plan, was to create three differentiated reading groups and use the vocab and, and the grammar to, to discuss and write and, and, and eventually have a one big project per each group. The third one was to get outside because the weather was good and to try to create a, a project based on beauty. And the last one was to wrap up the beauty, wrap up the project, wrap up the Day of the Dead and the projects of reading all and into final presentations. Reflecting back on what all happened, um, got off to a tragic start. This student, um, Vanessa Medina Gonzalez, was in a tragic car accident with her parents, and they passed away uh, right at the start of this project. And so there was no way that I felt like we could just go forward. We had an empty desk to deal with. Um, we had a sister who had three funerals to deal with so we wrote cards we raised money in our school to help with the funeral costs and we also used it uh, to talk about Vanessa uh, any memories that we had we also used it to write about Vanessa and I actually think that was a good way to do that instead of denying that there was an empty desk there um, by week two the kids were wanted to get into the, the ghost stories thing of the day of the dead which was kind of touchy because we just dealt with real death um, but they they wanted to go through it, and so kids shared their stories in the cellar, or they did it also by the uh, fire light of YouTube in our classroom, and we also did it outside in the woods, uh, and where we finished up our ghost stories, and those were awesome. It just that was just a, such a good way for them to share, uh, culturally appropriate, uh, with uh, creativity, and and. The, we went from that into the beauty project where these kids in the woods went out with their phones and gathered all kinds of images and then they used them to um, write um, short blurbs on it and I was very proud of what they were doing there was some great ideas that came out of that um, by week four all the readings that we had done this was the Quixote group they were told they were to put these into a final project and this was just an outstanding project based off Pobriana that um, I, I believe this 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 should be a big hit for any class that wants to go see what the story is about. They just nailed it. So proud of them. I had to put it out on uh, public media uh, or social media what they were doing because it was such awesome stuff. Um, you can see it if you click on this um, website. You can see their, their play. It was really good. So I saw really high quality stuff. Part of the whole thing, the AIP thing, is that it, it's a journey and this does not relate to the goals that I set out to earlier. But when we came across a chat, uh, chapter in reading on multimedia, I decided that I really liked the idea of infusing more multimedia into my classroom. And so I started to design a module here. It is that had all my goals as well as all of their agenda in one place. And so here you could, kids could know that we were going to click from top to bottom. We were going to work through this stuff if you were gone, you could click into that. And that is just, I think, the part of, of teaching that it happens. You you come across a new idea, you, you infuse it in. You don't just wait till the project was over. Here's the project, though. Kids were gathering the vocab from their stories. We were all linking them together. Um, we were discussing the common concepts. Here's a discussion board uh, about happiness that they got from their stories. And what did I find? Well, one, I have to compare what I found to something else. We did Quixote. Right before this, we were doing a unit on uh, Christopher Columbus. An unbelievable difference between these two. In the Christopher Columbus unit, I basically said, here's a reading that I really think is good, and here are some comprehension questions to answer. Go at it. I got 36% of the students turned in their work. 
they actually just completed the vast majority, almost 75% of the kids didn't even do this because uh, one is not very interesting, I guess, for them. And also it, it, they just couldn't understand it. So I decided I had to differentiate. And so I gave three different readings, Cervantes to the kids who could handle Columbus. I got Dragoon was in the middle and, and Blaine Ray was for very easy readings. And what I heard right away was uh, when I started that kids said, wow, I actually understand what I'm reading. And that was huge. That was huge to, uh, to for our climate. And uh, so here were my results. When I did the differentiation project, I got 98%. And that's only because two kids were gone in Mexico. They probably would have done it too. So it, almost 100% completion based off doing taking two different readings and doing them in different ways. And the second way the way that this AIP project by infusing creativity, collaboration, create, uh, critical thinking and communication into what we're doing, obviously uh, led to higher student achievement. So what did I learn from all of this? I learned that differentiation of content increased individual student achievement while creating common experience that built a positive sense of community. I was very worried initially that we wouldn't have a common experience if everyone was doing their own thing. But by linking the vocab together and the concepts and the themes that in those different stories and then having one final project it built a common experience and also it was so awesome to see the kids that did not read Don Quixote get exposed to Don Quixote through the interpretation of their fellow students it was like students teaching students literature and that was outstanding and and kids wanted to see each other's work more than one time and I tell you what that was powerful um we also, I think I've collaboration toward a creative endeavor enhanced the social and academic climate of the class. It's hard to put a, a number on this, but the working toward a creative end as opposed to a comp, like a comprehension document really amped up the vibe and the, the learning environment and led to higher student achievement. Also, I let them create their own rubrics, which I think helped them own it and also be more mindful of what they were doing so as i reflect on everything that um that of this project i think i had an absolute breakthrough um as a teacher on differentiating content i had always thought that differentiating content was like oh yeah that's something they talk about in books but in real life you can't do two things at once and the fact is you cannot do two things at once but you what you can do is the group can do many things at once i can't they can and so letting it become student-centered meant me giving up control which was scary and i at first i was like they're not getting quixote to the depth that i they would get if they were with me but when i looked at the final product of what they they accomplished with their they had incredible understanding of the book and it was produced in their own words and according to their own interpretation and they weren't trying to spit out what they thought i wanted to hear i it was it was awesome and I think the student created rubrics also helped them know what we were looking for. And so, and then to, to build this multimedia uh, board where everything is in one place uh, was just an, an unbelievable journey in it. And in this journey though, there was incredible pain to lose that student. Um, but also lots of discovery as, uh, as this project went forward. So um, I believe that this is uh this is the end of my project. Uh, I believe that this project itself offers a great model for probably what I'm going to be doing in uh, maybe by the this end of even end of this semester that we will try to put together in a YouTube video like what I'm making right here. I believe this is a great model. What this class uh, overall, this class has been a journey of discovery. Um, of some pretty transformational um, ideas uh, for me. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. Thank you.